If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know how much I talk about the importance of learning to love and accept yourself. And it's not just because doing so is a good idea because you're the only person who has to live with yourself from the day you're born till the day you die. So it's probably a good idea to learn to like that person, but also because the root of so many of our biggest issues is in our lack of self-love and self-acceptance. We're going to talk about this more in this video, and I'm going to show you what is going to start to get better and probably what you've noticed getting better as you've learned to like and accept yourself more for however long you've been doing this work. And the more you do it, the more you move into this place of liking, loving, accepting yourself for exactly who you are, the less you are going to struggle in so many areas that you may not have even realized are connected. I think this one is going to hit some places that it needs to hit. And also knowing that if you are struggling with any of these things that I talk about today, that learning to and doing the work to love and accept yourself is going to play a big part in helping you resolve many of these issues. Stay tuned. This is going to be a good one today. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And if you're back again, say hello. And if you are new or old, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel. The button is about right down there. Either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible membership community, The Shift Society, we are taking, where we are taking this work deeper. We are diving into these concepts at a deeper, more transformational level and doing it in community where you can get support and get help and not feel like you're doing it alone. And if you get stuck having somewhere to go to get support. I help heart center go-getter men and women break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And the ironic part is a lot of the crap that we are struggling with is a result of our lack of healthy relationship with ourselves. It was Alfred Adler, who is one of the forefathers of modern psychology and a contemporary of Freud, who started talking about how so many of our struggles come from our lack of courage to let ourselves be imperfect. That so many of the things that we struggle with are rooted in our own self-doubt, in our own struggles with our self-esteem, in our own sort of broken relationship with ourselves. And then all of the overcompensating, all of the fear, all of the posturing, all of the stuff that we do to try to make up for that, to try to overcompensate for that, to try to resolve that. But we end up doing it in ways that make it worse. And so today I want to talk to you about the things that you will stop doing as you start to love and accept yourself more. And you can all also, if these are ones that you have been struggling with, if you notice that like, yeah, I still struggle with those ones, then there's going to be some points here for you to take away to be like, yep, that's what I want to work on. And also knowing as I work on my relationship with myself, these ones will start to resolve themselves almost automatically without you even really realizing it. So it's this twofer, right? So we work on the issue itself and then also work on our relationship with ourselves. And then that combination makes the biggest change. It gets us the furthest and allows us to move forward more quickly, more easily, um, more effectively. My shifters who are here today, you have been working on this in, on a deeper level for a while now, for basically, you know, since you joined the Shift Society, this is a big part of the work that we're doing in there. And so I want you to use this to recognize the growth that you've had, recognize these things that have been shifting as you've been doing this work. And then share with us in the comment section below, section below what you've noticed transforming. So what are these things? What are these things that you will stop doing so much as you learn to love and accept yourself? The first one, and this one might be obvious, but taking things less personally. 
The reason why we take things personally is because we think someone else's actions, words, ideas, whatever that is, we think what they're doing or saying about us means more than what we think about us. So we are outsourcing our sense of self to other people's words or actions and then taking that in and taking it on and believing it to be true, believing that it's something against us, believing it is some kind of threat to us. But as we are more solid in our relationship with ourselves, we realize that little to nothing is personal that we can intentionally take a step back and decide, am I going to take this in? Am I going to take this on? What am I going to make this mean about me? And am I going to make it mean that I'm a reject, that I'm a loser, that this person doesn't love me, that there's something wrong with me? Am I going to make it mean that? Or am I going to go back to my own beliefs about myself, the ones that I've been working on, the ones that I've been getting more solid? Am I going to default to what other people are doing and what I'm going to make it mean about that or what other people are saying and what I'm going to make it mean or am I going to default to what I think and what I make that mean. The next thing you'll stop doing so much is overthinking. Overthinking everything you did, overthinking everything you said. So much of our overthinking comes from our own self-doubt, our own fear. What if I did that wrong? What if I said that wrong? What if they're taking it that way? What if they're thinking that about me? Again, it's putting our self-worth in the hands of other people's perspectives, ideas, or opinions. When we are solid in our own, we don't need to outsource that. When we're second guessing ourselves all the time, it's because we are doubting. We are doubting who we are. We're doubting that we won't be able to handle whatever it is that happens from whatever we did or said. Now, obviously, if we've done something hurtful or harmful and we're second guessing that and realizing that like, okay, that was actually a really crappy thing to do. And, you know, I need to go make it right. I need to apologize. I need to resolve this issue. I need to address it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the times where you're sitting and stressing and wondering and worrying and maybeing and what ifing instead of being like, you know what? I think we're good. I think that if there is a problem from whatever I did or said, if I'm not aware that someone could have been taking it a certain way or someone could have been upset by it, I'm going to trust that if there was a problem, Someone will address it, someone will bring it up, someone will approach me with it. We'll be able to work it out and talk it through and get past it and I won't see it as this big threat. And then when it's those times when we're, yeah, worrying and wondering about what people are thinking about us. What if they took it this way? What if they, you know, what if they thought I meant that? What if they, what if they, you know, thought that, that, that this was what was going on here? And when we don't know exactly, when we're just speculating, reading into things too much, overthinking things too much, Instead of just being like, you know what, I think we'll decide that we're going to be okay unless something comes about later on where it comes out that it's not and then I will deal with it. We're going to talk about overthinking decisions in another video that's going to be coming up. So stay tuned for that because that's a whole other whole topic in and of itself. But for those times when you find yourself overthinking things that you did or said. Building a more solid relationship with yourself is going to help you feel more confident, solid, and secure, and there's going to be less of this monkey mind going back and forth and here and there and everywhere. The next thing that you're going to stop doing so much as you learn to love and accept yourself is you're going to stop stressing about what other people think about you. It's pretty apparent. This one is pretty obvious, but we worry about what other people think about us when we are not sure what we think about us. It becomes tenuous. It becomes, we kind of are walking on this shaky ground with our sense of self, our own identity. When we haven't established it, when it's not solid, then it becomes wavering based on what other people could be thinking. And so if you want to stop worrying about what other people are thinking about you, get really good and solid and clear on what you think about you. And then you can leave their thoughts up to them. The next thing you're going to stop doing as you start to love and accept yourself is 
over justifying your decisions. I'm not talking about wanting to explain what your decision making process is or talking through a decision with a loved one for whom it's going to affect or, you know, wanting to collaborate, wanting to get some opinions, wanting to just like kind of see what other people are thinking as you figure out what decision to make. But when you have made a decision, when you've decided to do something and other people might have thoughts or opinions about it, you can let them in. You can, you can share. You can actually share as much about your decision making process or the reason for it. You can share as little or as much as you want. You don't have to share anything if you don't want to. You don't have to justify it. Again, the reason why we try to over justify our decisions is because we're trying to control someone else's thoughts about it because we need some other people to agree with us. We need other people to sign off on it. We need other people to think that we're doing the right thing. We need them to see it our way so that we can feel good about it. But if you are solid in that, if you are feeling good about it, you know who you are, you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you don't need other people to see it your way. You don't need other people to give their permission or approval, especially if it doesn't impact them in any way, especially for those times when it's just about wanting people to, to see, right, to understand and to support when you don't actually need that from them and they might not even be willing to give it. So saving your energy and focusing on what you're doing and why you're doing it and make sure you like your reasons and then you don't have to justify them to everyone else. The next thing you'll stop doing as you start to love and accept yourself more is stressing about making the wrong decisions. And like I said, we are going to be more going more deeply into this in another video that's coming up. But, you know, thinking about this, making the wrong decision is so much less about making a mistake, like fearing making that mistake, and so much more about what we are going to make it mean about us if we do. So if you're solid in who you are, you can make, you can make a decision. It can turn out not exactly the way that you wanted it to. And you can be disappointed. You can be discouraged and you can be frustrated, but you're not going to turn against yourself. You're not going to make it mean that you're an idiot, that you're a loser, that you don't know what you're doing, that you suck, that you're a failure, whatever that is, because you've already established within yourself that those things just aren't true. The next thing that you're going to stop doing as you learn to love and accept yourself more, we've touched on this a little bit, is both needing to be right and needing people to agree with you. Again, this goes back to justifying your decisions, right? When we are justifying it, it's because we need people to agree with us. When we need to be right, it's because we need other people to see something about us, to think something about us, that we are the best, that we're the most intelligent, that we, you know, we're the most insightful, that we've got it all figured out, because perhaps we are doubting those things within ourselves. But when we're not doting those things in ourselves, we can be solid in that, be like, you know what? This is okay. This is what I think. This is my perspective. These are my beliefs. This is where I'm at. And if you don't agree with it, if you're not on board, that's okay. I'm going to be in charge of my thoughts and my beliefs and my decisions and what I think. And I'm going to let you be in charge of yours. Now, again, it's not to say that, you know, it's not nice to be right. <laughs> Of course, it's nice to be right. It's nice when people see things our way. It's nice when people agree with us. And of course, we want to, you know, for relationships sake, we want to be willing to be flexible, to be open to other people's ideas, to be able to engage in conversation, to be able to learn and grow from and with each other. Absolutely. But I think you know that I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when we like dig our heels and we're like, I have to be right. You have to see things my way. You have to agree with me. And that is all ego-based. When we are trying to force other people to th see things the way that we do, it's rooted in ego because our ego is fragile. And I've talked a lot about ego before. I have other videos about that, but basically just our ego is sort of our 
our, our made up sense of self that is there to protect us from our vulnerable self or our, our authentic self because we're scared to show that because we don't actually think that it is good enough. So as our self-love, our self-acceptance, as our solid sort of um, self-concept is established, the more up that goes, the more down the ego goes. Our ego will always be there because we all have egos. You can't get rid of the ego. You don't need to kill the ego. You don't need to, you know, kibosh the ego. But it is learning how to know when we are having an ego reaction to something and learning how to calm the ego. So needing people to agree with you, asking yourself, why do I need everyone to agree with me? Not, I like people to agree with me. Why do I need people to agree with me? Why do I need to be right? I remember my brother telling me this saying several years ago um, where he, I think he learned it when he was in his own therapy or, or something like that. And, and the person said to him, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And now I'm not saying that we have to concede everything and agree with other people and never have our own opinions, but really looking at those times, is this a mountain that I want to die on? Do I need to be right? Do I need to stick my heels in this hard or can I just, you know, take a little bit of a step back, take a breath, exhale and be like, okay, agree to disagree. You can see things your way. I can see things my way. The next thing that you will stop doing as you start to love and accept yourself is fearing making mistakes. This one might surprise you. You might be like, what? How does fearing making mistakes, what does that have to do with my relationship with myself? Well, it has everything to do with it because fearing making a mistake isn't even about the outcome. An outcome that is, you know, if we make a mistake and something happens that we weren't expecting to happen, that we didn't want to happen, it's just a thing. It's a thing that happened. I made a mistake, right? I intended for something to go one way. It didn't go that way. I was wrong. It was wrong. That sucks. But what am I going to make it mean about me? Am I going to take a step back when I make a mistake and be like, shoot, that wasn't what I was planning to do. Okay, what do I need to do to make it right? If I've hurt someone, then I need to make amends. I need to apologize, take responsibility for that, have some accountability for that, right? If it's a mistake that resulted in something at work where I did something wrong, then I need to take responsibility for it again. What do I need to do to make it right? What do I need to do to fix it? What did I learn from this? How am I going to do it better next time? How am I going to fix it? right? That's just a normal way to respond, a healthy way to respond to making a mistake. But when you fear, when it becomes debilitatingly fearful to make a mistake where you're so scared to even try things or do things or, or experiment or explore, it's because of what you're going to make it mean about you. There's a lot more on the line. If you make a mistake, I'm a loser. I'm an idiot. I'm a failure. I can't do anything right. What's wrong with me? right? You're going to put yourself through your own kind of personal hell. You're going to be beating yourself up. You're going to be an a-hole to yourself based on an outcome that you weren't planning or expecting or wanting, but then you're going to turn it against yourself. That is what you fear. It's not the actual mistake. It's what you're going to make it mean. But when you have a solid relationship with yourself, you can respond to mistakes in the former way where you're like, okay, what needs to be done now? This happened. It sucks. It's unfortunate. What do I need to do about it now? How do I need to fix this? How do I need to make it right? And then it's not that big of a deal to make a mistake. Of course, you're not going to go through life just, you know, flippantly not caring if you make a mistake, but you're not going to be sitting in fear, avoiding for fear of making a mistake. Do you see the difference there? The next thing that you will stop doing as you build a solid relationship with yourself is fighting for acceptance. How often do you find yourself trying to convince people that you're good enough, that you're worthy enough? How much are you over-functioning, over-performing, people-pleasing, overly giving, not be out of like this generous, you know, abundance of spirit where you just want to give generously, but where you're trying to prove that you're good enough. 
trying to prove that you're worthy enough, trying to prove that you matter, trying to get people to like you and accept you. You don't need to do that when you believe in yourself, when you know that I have something to offer by being me, by just showing up and being myself, that is valuable, that is lovable. There's a difference between fighting for love and fighting to be loved. Let's say that again. There's a difference between fighting for love, fighting for a relationship, investing in a relationship because you want to see a relationship flourish, because you don't want to give up on someone, because you want to put the effort in, right? Because you value the relationship versus fighting to be loved, trying to prove that you're good enough, trying to get someone to see your value. Which one of these surprised you? Were you like, I didn't know that I had been struggling with this because I've been struggling with my relationship with myself and not feeling good about myself, liking, loving, accepting myself for who I am and making friends with myself. I know it sounds super cheesy, but we don't spend the time investing in our relationship with the most important person in our lives that we are stuck with 24 hours a day, seven days a week from birth until death. And it doesn't really occur to us to be like, huh, maybe I should be doing some work and investing in this relationship. Maybe I should work on liking this person, becoming friends with this person, enjoying just sort of spending time with this person. Why doesn't it occur to us? The foundation for building your relationship with yourself, like the foundation of any solid relationship, is trust. Like a relationship with another three-dimensional being, building trust is what is needed for a healthy relationship. Same goes for ourselves, building trust within ourselves. And to get you started on that, I have a guide for you. It's the simple steps to self-trust. That is gonna get you well on your way to building trust within yourself. It's gonna walk you through the necessary steps to become more trusting with yourself so you can start building that foundation for a better, healthier, more solid relationship with yourself. And you can use this guide while you are waiting for registration for the Shift Society to open, where we go even deeper into it and spend a good amount of time and energy um, developing a really solid relationship with ourselves. And we also work on these issues as well as other issues as well. Um, And we work on them at a deeper level. So we're working on a relationship with ourselves, we're working on the issues in and of themselves, and that combination creates the big transformation. Get more information about both of those in the description below. What are your thoughts? Would love to hear from you. Let me know, where are you at? What's going on? Um, Like the video, if you liked it, hit the like button. (laughs) Share it out if you think this would be helpful for other people. Um, and oh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take good care of you.